Hi guys, my name is Charles. I'm the president and co-founder of Taito Robotics. We make thrust measurement equipment for drones and today I'm going to discuss 21 ways to improve your flight time and your payload carrying capacity. So first thing I'm going to talk about is the propeller optimization. One thing that we typically recommend if you're having a drone that flies mostly stationary is to reduce the number of blades. Ideally, in theory, actually having a single blade is the most efficient configuration. But in practice, for balancing reason, you'll typically have two blades. And also, you'll want to have a lower pitch if your drone is not flying quickly. If you're flying quickly, then you'll, have to, you'll want to have a, a higher pitch. That's something you can test actually uh, using a wind tunnel and using truss stands or even using a vehicle. Second thing we'll recommend is to use a high efficiency motor. Not all motors are created equal. Some of them will have different configuration internally and that will obviously affect the efficiency. Even more important than having a good propeller and a good motor is to have a good combination of motor and propeller. In some cases, you could have a really efficient motor and a really efficient propeller, but if they're not matched correctly, you're going to get really low efficiency when you're actually in flight. And in some cases, you can even burn your motor. Another thing is in the flight itself. If possible, it's better to be flying at a steady state configuration. So acceleration, whether it's due to wind or due to the control itself, will make your drone less efficient. Another very important aspect is the battery system. As with anything that flies, weight is everything and weight density for batteries is a big part of it. Some things that we don't always think of, but the battery management system and the battery casing that protects the batteries is also part of the weight and that can have a significant impact on your, your final flight time. Now I'm jumping into more operational concerns. Flying in good weather conditions when it's possible will increase your flight time. And that also includes the altitude at which you fly. So in some cases, if you fly close to ground and there's a lot of wind, that's going to give you a better flight time there. Another thing that can affect efficiency and it's a bit less obvious, it's the vibration of the drone. So vibration can affect efficiency in a few ways. A motor that vibrates and a propeller that vibrates will be less efficient, but also the vibration can affect the control system and the gyroscope and electrometer, which can then affect the state estimator and eventually the control output that's sent to the motors. So all of that can have a bit of an effect. Another thing that can help is to limit LED and camera usage. In some cases, some cameras can consume a lot of power. Another thing that we found can help a bit is to calibrate your drone properly. You can get better performance. Another part that can help with your flight is to use a high quality charger. Uh, not all charges are created equal and some of them won't be as nice to your batteries. The main thing is to try to charge your batteries slowly. If you charge them in half an hour versus charging them over two or three hour period, that's definitely going to affect the battery life and how much charge is going to hold after a few hundred cycles. You can also use a drone with a good power management system. That affects everything from uh, the efficiency of the DC-DC converters as well as the power transmission within the drone itself. Obviously, with lithium polymer batteries, you do not want to discharge them completely. In general, it's better to keep your charges between 20 and 80% when possible, and only if you need to really go with a longer flight, then you go to 100% and you'll discharge your battery completely. In general, it's better to have a drone with a more aerodynamic design. If you are flying, for example, with a large camera or large parts that are not aerodynamic and you need to maximize flight time, it's obviously not ideal. Another part that can help is to use an ESC that is highly efficient. There are two main reasons for that. First of all, obviously, if you have 5 or 10% losses in your ESC, it's power that's not going to your propeller. And the second part is an inefficient ESC is going to heat up a lot. And heat is very damaging to transistors, which will lead to early failures. In our experience, actually, a lot of failures from drones come from the electronic components and not necessarily the bearings and the motor. Another thing that can help is to optimize your center of gravity. Usually it's going to be optimized from your drone manufacturer. A center of gravity that's off the natural center of gravity, that's going to lead to less efficient points of operation for your propellers and eventually a shorter flight time. When you're flying with your drone, turn off your drone when you're not using it or use power saving features. So a drone at idle that's transmitting video can consume power and it can reduce your overall flight time. Another thing you can do is to optimize your flight controller setting. That's a little bit more difficult to do as a user, 
but as a manufacturer of drone or if you're doing FPV, you'll know what I'm talking about. A big part of the drone's power use, and I'm talking sometimes five to 10%, is going to go to the controller system. And what it means is that if, because of a gust of wind, your drone moves a little bit sideways, you're going to have a control input that's going to make the drone come back to where it used to be. If you have this control input set to a very high gain, it's going to take a lot of energy to keep attitude. And it's not always required, especially with today's modern gimbals. So that's why you're going to see drones that fly very, very long for record times are going to have very soft control settings. So if that's a possibility, it's definitely worth investigating it to increase the flight time. Another thing you can do is also use wires that are correctly adapted to your flight. So they have to be large enough to reduce resistance, but not too large that they increase the weight of your drone and then cause the drone to fly shorter. Another thing you can look at also is to improve cooling. With heat, your resistors, the resistance of your wiring and your transistors are going to become a bit less efficient and that can reduce the flight time. And finally, a small one is that if you fly further away from your transmitter, you need to use more power, especially for video transmission. So having a good ground system with good antennas can help to reduce how much power is required in flight for video transmission. So this was 21 ways to help you fly longer with your drone. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to leave comments below or send us an email. And if you like this video or found it useful, please leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.